Hi everyone, welcome to another Wargame video. Today I want to go through my Eurocops deck. I've had this since I originally played the game back in 2014 when it was released. I've gone through and added and changed a few bits when we restarted playing recently, but I need to go through it and have a proper look at everything. Especially since I'm playing 10v10, so I need to make sure I'm taking the highest rank of every unit that I can, and throw a few extra. So starting with logistics. I don't really want to change much here. I've already changed these to infantry, which I'm happy with. Fob I'm leaving and the vehicles in terms of logistics, they're all pretty much the same. They just carry different amounts. What I might actually do is change that to the Jupiter because I don't really necessarily need something so big though it is faster hmm I'll go with a small one because it's cheaper and I can only take trend fine infantry so I think it goes without saying that for infantry you need to take anti-tank the anti-tank that I have in my American deck is terrible, so I kind of want to start using the Eurocomps deck a little bit more when I'm going to be doing ground maneuvers rather than a mixture of air and ground. So the Milan F3s are the one, I think. And currently I've got them in a VAB with a cannon, an auto cannon. Otherwise, it's the Panther, which is quite cheap. Into GM Milan's, into Puma, an MX-10. The MX-10s are very good. But I'm not sure that... Any, are they any better? Oh, they've got armor. But they're slower. So that's the trade-off. Slower, but they have armor. Similar, if not the same gun, just with different amount of rounds, I think. Yeah. Fine. So we'll leave them as is. And just the other thing I should double check is I can bring in four hardened or six trained. Now that's difficult, because the reality is I'm probably going to end up bringing in more than four in a match, but that's a lot of bonus accuracy for something that needs that bonus accuracy, so we'll take hardened. Then we have Mistrals coming in the VAB. Let's have a look at our other options for anti-air. So let's pin the Mistrals so we can keep an eye on them. And I think it's either them or these fellas. The Fliegerfaust. So their accuracy is higher, but their range is less on both counts. That applies to both. So I think it's going to be the Mistrals. Let's have a quick look at the other troops just to make sure no one else has anti-air. Because sometimes special troops have anti-air and things. No. Doesn't look like it. Fine. Now again, you can bring them in the Panther. The VAB is the speed, that's why I've got them in that. I mean, it's difficult because you kind of want to use the auto cannons, but it just makes those units that much more expensive when they already cost 30. And I've already got them coming in as, wait, no, where are they? There they are. Trained. Do I really bring in six in a match? Probably not. So let's take them, but we'll take them as hardened. I still want them in the VAB rather than the AMX-13, purely because of the additional speed. And the road speed is 150, and, you know, I want them to get the front line pretty quickly if I'm going to engage choppers with them. And then I've got the Legion 90s. Unpin that. Mm. Now this is where I start to 
um an hour a bit more. So let's change role just so we're seeing less. We can get rid of the anti aircraft and anti tank. Let's get rid of the engineers for now. Let's just have a look at everything else. So the Chasseur 85s are your pretty standard troops. A lot of people have those. Decent accuracy. Let's pin that. In fact, we'll unpin. Let's pin the Legion 90. And then we can have a look at how that compares to everything else. So the Chasseurs, accuracy is the same. Range is better on the Legions. The accuracy on the machine gun is better. They both have the Famas. Whereas the training is regular on the Chasseurs and shock on the Legion 90. So the Legion 90 are better here. Obviously, there's a price difference, which has to be taken into account, but we'll, we'll stick with the Legion 90 for now. Then we've got Commando Marines. Now they're very similar, other than the fact they're elite. They're in strength of 15, which is pretty good. They have the Lark F1, which is the same as the Chasseurs, but with more rockets, and they have a better machine gun. So they're tempting. Then we've got these fellas, which have Hitchy and AP power. Short range, though. Very short range. That's why the Legion 90 are better, because of the range on those missiles. The Falschrim Jäger. As you can see, I've already got these in, but we'll just have a quick look at them anyway. So they have a pretty good machine gun. They're elite in training. They're only 30. They have a decent little mini SMG. And they're launch it isn't bad how do they compare to the commando marines strength isn't this high that's interesting i wonder if the commando marines would be better than the false Jager. although that said we're not talking about the false rim 90 there are we which is what i probably have in my day i have the 90s so they have better everything, except there's only 10 strength. Fine. The Heimatsuchen. Very short range AP power. Rocket. The Jaegers. Just regular troops, now it's special. Legions, Legion 90 we've already got. Panzer Grenadiers. Now these used to be the old go-tos, the Panzer Grenadiers. I've got some in a Marder 2 there. And Marder 2s are pretty good. They have a nice big cannon. Decent machine gun, decent min rifle, shock troop training. That does mean I've got two sets of shock troops which are costing the same in the deck. Which makes me wonder why. Maybe I should think about changing that for something else. Maybe I'll e need those elite troops. I've got elite troops there though. Hmm. These, these aren't really doing anything for me down here. Rima 85s. Now, reservists, oddly enough, they are super cheap. And I've seen people absolutely spam these things. But they can't be that good, surely. They're militia. Their training is horrendous. I mean, overwhelming numbers, certainly, but they're just going to get terrified so easily. But for 10 points, that would be a lot of infantry, wouldn't it? 
he could bring in at the start of a match, even in a 10v10. Reservistas. I don't know. I'll have a think about that one. So we've got the legions, and we're bringing them in as veterans. We've got the pantagrenadiers, and we're bringing them in as veterans. The Falstrom Jaeger, I don't really want to change them, because they're very good. They're elite. The only thing I was sort of debating in my head was whether the commando marines are worth it. Because they get the extra strength, which could make a huge difference in the long run. That is tempting. Let's pin those for a second. And compare them to the commando marines. So... Ah, the Falsham Jäger have a better launcher. Similar machine gun. Rifle-wise, very similar. But a faster rate of fire. Suppression's the same. The only thing that the Commando Marine really have over the Falsham Jäger are those extra 5 strengths, so or the 15 troops instead of 10. That's difficult. I think I'd leave it. Just stick with the Falsham Jäger for now, because they were a recent addition to the deck anyway. So let's skip that and let's move on to support. You're kind of limited here for what you're going to bring in, in terms of anti-air. So the Roland is pretty much the best in terms of air defense missiles. Let's get rid of everything else. So the Roland 3, it's fairly cheap at 60. Range first planes isn't great, 3,500. But nothing else outdoes that range. That is the best range. And I'm not sure what the difference is. So that roll 3, if I just pin that and I have a look at that. What's the difference between these two? Nothing. Road speed. The German one is faster. They have the same missiles. They have the same number of missiles. Same accuracy. Very really just speed. So you might as well stick with the normal Roland to bring them in cheaper. What about these guys? Again, they're more expensive. But they're identical. In fact, the speed is even more similar. What are you paying an extra five points for? Less armor? Tiny bit more speed? I don't think that's worth five points. The Roland 2s just don't have the range. They're nice and cheap. Now the flak pans are good. They're good against ground and air, but they're not cheap. They're quite expensive. And the range isn't great. In the grand scheme of things, yes, they're going to be handy, but I can't see myself bringing them in that much. I do have them in the deck at the moment, but maybe I need to think about taking them out. So I've already got two anti-air pieces. And yes, these are good against ground as well. And they have the stinger on them, but I'm just, I'm not convinced. I think they have the place in the game, but if you've already got two missile ones, I think it's maybe a bit unnecessary. And they have, the Crowtail has a much longer range against helicopters. And the Roland has a much higher range against aeroplanes. So this kind of goes in between the two, but I'm going to delete that because I just don't think it needs to be there. In fact, I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to make sure we have the best in the deck that we can. So three hardened Rolands. We want four hardened Crowtails. And then I think we'll leave it at that for air. And let's have a look at the mortars and artillery. So obviously what's in my mind with this deck is I want to use ground forces. And I want to be able to push forward. So I need mortars. I need to be able to smoke. And it doesn't need to be necessarily long range mortars, expensive ones. What I am concerned about is rate of fire more than anything else. 120 millimeter rounds, they're going to be big smoke shells. They're going to be big shells. But there's only 54 of them and it fires pretty slowly. These two have 22 rounds a minute. 
going to get rid of the others just so we can just focus on the motors because there won't be a lot to look through. And then here we have 120 millimeters and then nine rounds a minute. These guys are nine rounds a minute as well, 120. They're quite cheap. Why are they so cheap? Speed. Is it just the speed that's the issue? Oh, they're amphibious as well. I'd never really go for water that much. That's also amphibious, but it has much higher speed. But that's very expensive, isn't it? 60 points, and there's a 30.1 there. More accurate, but for smoking, accuracy isn't really that important. But I'm sort of leaning towards one of these, perhaps, just for the speed. But they're going to produce quite small smoke. Though that one has an auto cannon on it as well, and a heat cannon, which is probably the main cannon, dual use. That's really cheap for something with an auto cannon. I mean, it has no armor, and the auto cannon is terrible in terms of accuracy. Well, this is actually quite a difficult choice. I usually take something that costs about 40. They do fire faster. You know, I'm going to take these. They're slow, but I don't need them to be fast. And they fire big shells. Let's go with them. We need four hardened. We don't need anything better than that. Let's get rid of everything else there. Let's go with howitzers and mortars. Sorry, howitzers and MRLS even. So I don't have, or didn't have any rocket artillery in this deck, but I am very tempted to take some cluster. Very tempted, because there's plenty of incidents where I feel like I could have used cluster and didn't have it. I usually take these types of things. Just my tube artillery. I've seen a few people with Caesars recently. Convinces, I mean, they're pretty big shells, but similar, sh same shells as the uh, AUF 1. Just more accurate. Tempted to take the Mars. It's for those situations where you're on the front line, you're against enemy tanks, and you just want to damage those tanks before you move in. And hitting them with a bunch of cluster munitions could do a lot of damage to them. Ten damage. HG power is pretty good on that. Two hundred and three millimeter rounds times two. Oh wow, that's gonna that's a sniping unit and it's gonna chomp through supplies. No, I think we'll go with the Mars. I'm going to take one veteran. Although that said, I mean, it does reduce. Hmm. You know what? Although it's not going to improve dispersion much. No, we'll take one. I think one will be enough. All we want to do is panic it and damage it. We're not trying to kill it. And that's us done for support. Let's have a look at tanks. So at the moment, I've got two very expensive tanks in here. And I don't know why. I'm... Let's just delete all the tanks. Let's start over. Let's just. The AMX are a good, cheap series of tanks. They're good on the move in terms of they can fire their auto cannon when they're on the move. They can't fire the main cannon on the move, so bear that in mind. And the stabilizer isn't great on the auto cannon, but sometimes it's enough to scare units away. The MX-40, now that can fire on the move with its main cannon as well. And it does a decent amount of damage. Q 
keep the MX-40 in mind. I'm tempted to take that. Just looking through for other bits and pieces that might be of interest. So, the Leclerc, the big French tank. And the Leopard. I mean, I'm, you get hard and you get a veteran Leopard 2 Air 5. I'll pin that. Let's pin that and let's have a look at these two side by side. So, basically, the Leclerc has more accuracy on its stabilizer. But otherwise, the Leopard is actually the better tank. It has slightly more damage. One point extra damage on one point extra front armor. And slightly more side armor. So the Leopard definitely needs to go in as a veteran. The Leclerc... I play it in games with low points. But it is a very good tank if you can keep it alive. Let's stick in two hardened for now, but I imagine I'm going to take that out. Now we need to start thinking about cheaper tanks. Because they're both very expensive. Leopard 2s. Not, not a huge amount of armour. They're not very exciting, are they? 16 and 15. AMX 40 has... 19 and 12, so you're talking about that being a bit of a glass cannon, it does a higher damage, but it's going to die quicker. These are cheap tanks. That's pretty good in terms of, the Leopard 105 has pretty good accuracy and stabilizers. So do these, but that one's a lot cheaper. I mean, these are tempting because of the auto cannon as well. That's what attracts me to the AMX. I kind of want, I think I want to stick the AMX 40 in there. I feel like that's a decent cheap tank to take in. And I had this completely full before, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to take less tanks because I don't take that many tanks. If I'm taking a tank in, it tends to be the more expensive end of the spectrum anyway. And I'm tempted to stick the 2A4 in there just because it's got good front armour. I thought maybe I should have something that's a lot cheaper. No, something about the 100 point mark. That's what I need next. And there's not a lot of choice there, is there? You're talking between these two, basically. Might as well take the 130 point and hardened. And let's move on. I don't want to take any more tanks. Right, I've got a lot of recon here. This seems excessive. This seems very excessive. Let's delete all of this. I like to take a helicopter, but I haven't been pulling them out as much recently. I've been using infantry more. There's a nice Tiger. Decent ground range, rockets, anti-air. That's got a nice set of weaponry, but it's very expensive. Gazelle has a cannon. That's pretty good. And it's only 30. Only good optics, though. This thing has very good optics, and this has very good optics. I think if you're going to take it, it's that. I mean, it trained isn't great, but I don't think any of them are any better. Oh, you can get hardened to those. I mean, that has a lovely array of weapons. But I'm pretty sure the anti-air range of the enemy choppers, aka the K-52 or what have you, outranges that considerably, so I just don't think that's going to work. As nice as the armaments are. Right, recon infantry and recon special forces. I mean, 
They're the only special forces here. They have a nice sniper rifle. The... Wow. That is a terrible launcher. Look at that law. 30% accuracy, 525 meter range. See, if that sniper rifle is anti-material, that would be fantastic. But it's not. That's actually really poor. That's kind of disappointing, actually. They're the only elite ones. A squad of two. So they're going to be good for spotting, but... With exceptional stealth, but I'm just... No, I'm not convinced. So, the BGS guys have... Terrible... Launcher. Commandos Para. Oh, here we go. They have a decent launcher. I said decent is better than the others. They're shock. So this is more what I'm wanting. Bring them in the chopper. I want to bring one squad in the chopper, that's for sure. Hussards. Terrible launcher. Only come in a squad of five. The Hussars 85, they have the better launcher. Not much in terms of chopper options, is there? I mean, it seems worth it to bring them in with the cannon. Just because at least then you can fight back against enemy choppers. Hmm. They're only regular. At least they're shot. I mean, it's going to be these guys, isn't it? As veterans. And do you bring these guys in to sit on the front lines? Exceptional stealth? They're going to be hard to see in any situation. Let's have a look at the vehicles. See if there's anything more exciting there. MX-10RC. Only good optics. Decent main cannon. Another cheap one. Only good optics. I really don't want anything. take anything that's not got very good optics at a minimum. Okay, so this is tempting. Leopard 101. Not enough armour. For what it is. It's cheap though. What's this? A Vabracet. Exceptional optics. For 55. No decent weapon on it. Everything else is medium and that's small though. That counts as small. That's interesting. Only trained. Eesh. At least you can have that in hardened. Let's leave it there for now. I thought I've only got four infantry. And I take more than that in some games. I really don't think they're worth it for exceptional stealth. The sniper rifle's nice, but... Uh... That rocket's just terrible. You're not going to be putting them into an enemy base to do any damage. I'm tempted to take more commandos. Take them in a VAB or something instead. I mean, there's, there's no reason not to take the commandos. They get extra weapons. They're better at everything. I'm actually slightly disappointed by the options here. Yeah, so I'll take them in a VAB, I guess. Doesn't need to be a VAB with a weapon on. Take veterans again. Fine, moving on. Vehicles. So that has a better range, 2, 6, 25, accuracy 50%. 
more accuracy, but it also comes with a lovely cannon. I do like the French cannons. ERC-90 Sagini. Nah. Little Milan. I've got the Marder in there. The other thing's the Cannon Jagdpanzer. It's a really cheap unit. That you can just sit in a line to fire at enemy infantry. So is the Marder. I'm taking the Marder because it's got higher AP power and better accuracy. That's why it's in the deck. Have I got it hardened already? Yes, I do. Fine. Then... I've got some Weasel Toe 2s down there. That's quite nice. Expensive, though. That also has a toe, the Jaguars. Weasels. Not very good accuracy on that little gun. Hmm. Another flak panzer. I mean, nothing's really jumping out that I would take other than those two, so we'll move on to helicopters. This is where we're going to have some fun, I think. So I've forever been taking expensive choppers, haven't I? Let's just delete everything. So that's got a stinger on it. And it's 50. That's got anti-ground with decent accuracy. That's a very good accuracy on that stinger. This has better accuracy. Gazelle. That has a good range against helicopters. Look at that. 2,600. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. I like that. That's just got a cannon on it, but it's pretty cheap. HE and AP power. That could do quite a bit of damage. The Tigers are good, but they're expensive. Tigers are very good, but they're expensive. I like that, because it's cheap. Uh, not that much cheaper, though. But it's got a it's that additional range I like. Tigers have the same range. Let's just take half of these for a start. And then... I'm actually tempted to take that for faulty because that's a decent cannon. You could do a helicopter rush on an enemy base with those. And do quite a bit of damage before they manage to bring it anti air. I'm going to stick those in. Although, let me just check what I've got for aircraft. Leave the helicopters for the minute. So I've got three extra points, but I'd need five to bring in another aircraft. So I could drop something somewhere else. Maybe one of these on the extra tank. I'll worry about the Navy in a minute. Um, so we've got a tornado. You know what? I built this deck a long time ago in terms of aircraft, so I think we should start over because stuff's changed, the stats have changed. And some things are better than others now, so we need to have a rethink. So that's quite a good plane. I've seen that brought out quite a few times. Turn radius is poor. Something to be aware of. East Rhine. Oh, that's anti-ground anti with the Mavericks. And the ML, so that's quite cheap. Something to keep in mind. Crusader. Yeah. Cheap and easily killed. That's a good long range seed. 4,500. Mirage Fighters. That's pretty decent. Semi active rather than fire and forget, though. 
I so want more fire and forget missiles. Raphael, fire and forget, there it is. Fast, exceptional, ECM 50%, turn radius 300. So that's the big boy, that's the elite one. That's the super duper one. Tornado. Ah, long range seed. Fine, so that's the longest range seed. So that comes in. So we've got seed, we've got one good anti-air. We need another good anti-air. It's going to be the ARAMs on these because at least they're fire and forget. And they're a little bit cheaper. It's just the turn radius. But you can have two veterans. So there's your anti-air, your air superiority fighters. It's going to be those two. Got that for anti seed. I want something that is anti ground, so let's get rid of air superiority because we don't need that now. And let's have a look for something. In fact, let's get rid of the bombers, let's get rid of the seed. We want an anti tank because this is something that I never have in my deck. Why is that coming up as anti tank? It's a bomber. Did I select the wrong thing there? No, select... Oh, multi-roll as well. Lots of bombers. That's clusters. What's the speed on that? 900. Napalm. Peace Rhine. The Maverick, because it's fire and forget, really. Because if you bring that in, it speeds worse. It turns better, but it speeds worse. ECM's better. Accuracy is better, but I'm going to bring in an elite anyway. And all that's got on it is that missile. I mean, the range is better, but it's semi active. I think we're going for the peace run. And then I kind of want a bomber. And there isn't a lot of choice. And if I'm going to go for one, I'm tempted to go for the clusters. Though I don't have anything in this deck that's going to kill. Clusters is actually a bad idea. I need something in this deck that's going to kill infantry. So I need as big a bombs as possible. Which is this thing. With four, five hundred kilograms. That's not a lot of bombs though. But it is very fast. That's got eight bombs. Terrible ECM though. Oof. I think that's the only choice there. Is it worth getting the extra points for that? Or am I better off using the three points to take some artillery that's good against infantry? LRM, HE power 11. It's equally expensive. I'm going to stick that in for now and just see. Or am I? Yeah. Let's stick that in for now. And we'll have a think about other stuff. Fine. So that's my deck as it is now. I sort of just changed things out to bring in higher tier of units or the higher veterancy. And I've just changed a few bits around because I was unhappy with old choices. I have got naval units selected. Again, this is very old. So first thing I'm going to do is deselect everything and just have a look at aircraft. Can I get any really nice aircraft in here? I'm allowed a Tomcat. 
even though I'm not America in this. I'm never going to bring in a Congo. I'm probably never going to bring that in anymore. So first thing that's going in is Tomcat. And then Super Hornet is tempting. Heat, Fire and Forget, Ship Missiles. Expensive though. I should take something that's anti-ship in terms of a helicopter. Because that's the other thing that I will bring in. Artillery anti-ship just out of interest. The Sea Buster, six missiles, accuracy 50%. Seventy percent on that one. Range isn't as good though. All about the helicopters with the rather helicopters with anti ship. Oh, there we go, helicopters anti ship. We want fire and forget for a start, so that's tempting. On two missiles per for 60. I thought we could get SA. And more is better in terms of missiles. Are we talking about the links? Links has more maneuverability. I'd like to take six of those. Fine. Okay, so that's the deck as it is now. And I need to play it. And I'm sure I will change some bits because some of it is going to be unworkable. It's certainly not going to be perfect. But that's the end of this video. I'll put up a game of me playing with this deck perhaps and certainly use it in some of my live streams so people can see what it runs like. But I'll also post any videos if I make further adjustments, which I'm sure I will. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I hope this was helpful in terms of what you're looking for in the deck and what's going through my mind as usual. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments down below. Or any suggestions for the deck, because I'm sure Grigory will. And I'll see you all soon for another video. As always, please do like, share and subscribe.